The difference between philosophy and religion. Philosophy has questions that may never be answered, and religion has answers that may never be questioned. Every day is a new beginning, a new opportunity. Um, and once we can release ourselves of the expectation of arrival, um, I, I think we might be able to taste the bliss that's talked about associated with awakening. Well, you know, I probably have spent most of my life in study, esoteric study. And what I can tell you is that it's the journey that we remember. It's n the process, the journey, is the experience. And becoming spiritual is, is about being conscious and, and, and aware of the journey and, and the process. I, I know that spirituality is sometimes thought of as as a more all-inclusive way of, of living and experiencing our life. I know that there are many people that are religious that, that belong to a faith and, and practice their faith and live their life. And that's their number one background. I know that, that mine's on the edge. It's out on the edge of, of my life where it's, it's, it's almost like a fire that's burning constantly. I, I never stop being thrilled. I never stop being excited. But it does have its ups and downs. I mean, life can be emotional and, and, and we can have challenges. I mean, Luke, I know that your experience as a shaman might be slightly different than mine, but I'm sure it's given you some rich experience. Mm. So, and, and the word shaman, I think, is an inter interesting word, um, you know, and, and I certainly can align with that in my intentions and, and the way that I try to hold myself. But really, uh, I see myself as just being a facilitator, you know, a facilitator for a person to really engage those deeper parts of themselves um, that really life doesn't, doesn't offer in the everyday waking life. Uh, it doesn't offer those opportunities. And I also try to communicate through direct experience as opposed to theory. So um, for me, that's been, that's been the discovery for myself, is that it's so important, as you just said, to uh, uh, enjoy the journey, find the value in the, in the waking journey also, and, um, and then share that with people through honest vulnerability. And, and that's really my method if you want to call it a shamanic practice, but as, as a facilitator um, in the more spiritual things associated with life. You know, at this point in my life, I, I, I realized that when I was writing my book, I could have written the 10 volumes or 100 volumes on, on the various knowledge of esoteric knowledge. But the, all of that is available in the universities and in, in the libraries of the world. But what was lacking and what I could not find was experience. So I wrote a book about the kinds of experience that you have living a spiritual life to give you some information on, on what you might encounter or what you may have already encountered. It's, it's, it's the experience that we have with the invisible world. I mean, the invisible world is just as close to us as our breath. And the more we acknowledge and re recognize and trust our intuition, our higher self, I mean, who can you trust in this world? It begins with yourself. If you will honor and trust and cherish your intuition and your higher self and your inner voice, then you're going to have guidance. Your spirit teachers and ancestors are constantly giving you guidance. I, I know in my case, I'm clear auditory, so I hear the voice of spirit. Some people are clairvoyant and, and they, they get visual images. Um, have you had experience with your spirit teachers? 
So that's that's interesting. Um, throughout most of my experience, no, I, I had not had much of an experience with those guides. Uh, but through our conversations and the experiences that we've had and reading your book, um, it was so practical in the ways of, of what an awakening could look like that what I'm noticing is that it's that small, still small voice that's in, in your head or in your heart. For me, that is my spirit guide that I've been able to tune into. Um, and I'm learning to, as you said, trust and invest in myself. You know, not as the egoic self, but that true inner inner self. And maybe before through different practices, religious practices or whatever, that was the point of frustration for me. And I remember asking, you know, it was, it was the guidance, take it to God. Well, I eventually asked, where the hell is the inbox? How do I do that? And I could never get answers. And that led to a lot of frustration. Ultimately, it led me to this path, I believe. And your book made that a very practical thing for me. And I know that I can reread that book probably a hundred times and find new ways to do that. But that was the value of your book and, and really the value of our friendship um, is that you show me very practical, realistic ways of accessing or, or bringing things to God, accessing those higher realms of consciousness um, that make this life a little bit easier to live. Well, you know, What's the process look like where we learn to trust ourselves? Mm -hmm. Well, in our journey of life, sometimes we have a dark night of the soul experience. Uh, we might lose a partner or, or maybe we have a terminal illness or maybe something tragic occurs. Well, this dark night of the soul experience, one of the outcomes is the diminishing of the ego I know when I was a young man, one of my bosses called me brash. Well, I was pretty much a hot shot. I had a good education. But in my early 40s, I went through a dark night of the soul experience. Well, when I'm on the ground looking up and my brain's not helping and my body's not helping and the ego's not helping, there's no place to turn except up. And then you ask God for help. In that moment, in that moment of surrender, we establish a new relationship with the divine that lasts for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is think of the question and the answer comes to us. The ego has to be number two. It cannot be number one. Our relationship with the divine has to be number one. That has to be our guiding principle. The ego is present, it's necessary, it's important, I do pay attention, I do notice, but it's not in charge of my life. It's number two, it's not number one. The divine's number one. And I think that's one of the things that came out of the dark night of the soul experience for me was that the ego got diminished. It didn't help me, it couldn't save me. I was drowning, I was on the floor. And I had to reach up and ask for divine help. And that created a new relationship where the divine is always present within me and it's always as close as my breath. And if I can think of the question, then I can get the answer. And I, I've had a similar experience and I think I'm still in that experience. I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, anywhere close to being um, settled, if you will. Um, but I too found that in, in a moment of surrender. And, uh, you know, I think because we are or I have been in a life where it's required a lot of the um, fight or flight, the survival mechanisms that we have. Um, it took a while to uncover that egoic space and, and, and be willing to really look at it and be honest. For me, because I think I'm a little maybe thicker headed than most, um, it, it had to take me to the floor also. And I had to come to that space where I said, okay, I, I literally don't have any thing more to offer through this body no amount of lifting it or no amount of pushing against it is going to work uh, because I've tried that and I know I'm you know maybe nearly half your age we were talking about that earlier but I believe I, I've been on this path um, and in a very intense way in the short amount of time I've been on this earth and and I've come to a similar uh, understanding 
that it, it is not by my, my might or will that this is going to work. Um, I have to come in concert with that higher thing, that higher power, um, the true self, and, um, and that's where we can strike a balance, I believe. You know, our higher self, our connection with our higher self, it's our soul. Mm -hmm. And that inner voice we hear in our mind's ear, our inner ear, is our soul speaking to us. There is no truer friend. There is no more honest information. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we have to learn to trust ourselves. And that inner voice is as true as sunshine. Everybody has an opinion, but the only important opinion is the one from the divine. Mm -hmm. If you don't know yourself, if you don't know your own mind, then you're gonna run into some difficulties. Trying to follow everybody else's opinion is gonna have you dancing in circles. But once you make that connection to your own higher self and can ask the questions and get the answers for your own personal guidance, then you're on a path that's gonna take you somewhere. Your God, by any name, dwells within you Trust that presence.